Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. In today's video I'll be showing you how I render hair in Abyss Paint X. This is everything from cleaning up the line art to doing the shading to texturing. So let's get started. So firstly, if you do sketches like me, where you don't really do line up, you just clean up the sketch, you would have to clean up the lines here in this sketch. Since it's still pretty messy and we want to do a rendering tutorial, so we have to make it look kind of nice. So just go in and erase what you want to, or if you do line art a different way where you just have it on top of the sketch, then get that lined. Now that the line art looks a lot nicer, we can go in and get it coloured. Now you're going to want to start uh, texturing it first. To texture, make a layer above the layer that you have your base colour on. Clip it. You can lower the opacity and you can have it on multiply if you want to. I'll be putting it on multiply for here so that we can see the effect a bit better. And then you're going to want to look for a specific brush. You're going to want to find Blurring Brush 1 and unlock it if you haven't already. Once you have unlocked them like I have here, you're going to want to get your base colour for the hair. So just eyedrop it if you want to. And then get a slightly darker colour. Because it's yellow, I'll be making it a bit warmer too since that tends to look nicer with yellow specifically. Then up the brush to as big as it can get and lower your opacity anywhere from 20 to like 45. Then you just go down the path of where the hair would go. I'll up the multiplier right here so that you can see what we're doing. So just take it from the roots and just gently go down. You sort of keep doing this on most parts until it's apparent that you can see some of the texture. This brush is really good for hair textures specifically, although it can be used for pretty much almost any texture unless it's a really funky one. And that is how easy it is to texture the hair. Then we'll move on to shading. So again, create a new layer and clip it on top of the textured one, which will then automatically clip down into the base hair layer. Have it go on multiply again, but this time you're going to want to have it on a bit of a higher opacity than what we originally planned for the hair texture. It should also be worth noting that you can change the opacity of your hair texture whenever you want to. I tend to keep it on higher after I'm done since I kind of like being able to see some of it. Then on your shading layer you're going to want to have a colour that you can shade with. You can absolutely go with a very similar or the same one that we use to texture since it will be the right kind of colour anyway. You can use any brush you want for this, but I'm going to be sticking with the blurring brush since it's less complicated and I don't have to switch over. So then just choose the parts that would be shaded and gently fill them in. I personally really like how the blurring brush looks in a shading anyway. It has an almost automatically blended effect to it, which is really really nice. And then just go over the parts that you think should be darker a little bit more, especially if you still have your brush on a lower opacity. So then just go wherever you think should be shaded with that. After you finish that, you pretty much have your shading done. If you want to do some more extreme shading, you can just essentially have half of it be wholly shaded like this. Which I think also looks pretty nice. So honestly, it's just a choice for you. You can shade it however you want to, but this is how I would personally do it. If you find some parts are pretty harsh, like around by here, just lower the opacity and go back in with your brush and go over the edges and you will find that they are then a lot less harsh as you can sort of re-blend them. Then for highlights we would do another layer and clipping it right again. This time though I would have it on add. It should be a fairly high opacity in my opinion if you want a nice shiny effect but you don't have to. I'd then go back to a more yellowy colour. And just go wherever the light would be and gently put it on. Of course, highlights can look different for every artist. This is just how I personally like to do them. And as you can see right here, if you lower the opacity, it will look different. So something you can absolutely do is have one be a lower opacity with your highlights. And then make another layer and go over it with the parts that you want to be brightest. And it would look pretty nice. So that is how I render hair. That's pretty much all of it. I don't tend to do anything else. Sometimes I colour the lines, but that's not really part of a rendering process. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed and found it helpful. If you did, consider supporting. Bye!